Hello, I'm Miles McCullough. I'm from Little Rock. <laughs> and tall. Yes. <laughs> and recently we held a, a few weeks ago we held a cereal drive for hungry families in Arkansas. Yes, we did. We uh, also held that a... went down to the uh, post office there in uh, Little Rock and, and kicked it off. Yeah. We also had a student-run 30-hour uh, fast in solidarity with starving citizens of the world. Okay. And we were wondering if you had any plans for foreign aid for developing countries or famine relief. Well, uh, I don't have any plans for foreign aid uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, we're trying to do what we can for those areas that we were just talking about that exist in our own state. Uh, I applaud folks who, who do that uh, and who provide aid to families all over the globe. Uh, we just had a young man that used to work for us and, uh, and volunteered and worked for the Clinton uh, Library uh, that has spent a year in Malawi. Uh, very bright guy, no telling how much money he could make uh, in the private sector. He has a calling, uh, he felt, to uh, go help people improve their lives and, and provide help and assistance uh, in a third world country. Uh, so there's a place for that, and I applaud folks that do it. I have to tell you that my first responsibility, though, is to do all I can for the folks here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi. <laughs> my name is Bonnie Sterling. I'm from Russellville. And we recently just had a speaker come talk to us about how low the percentages of governmental funding for the arts in high school. And I was wondering if it would be possible to maybe raise um, the fundings across the state? And if so, what would be the requirements for you and for the state for this to be possible? Well, actually, we have just, uh, and I'd like to take credit for this, but uh, I think the previous administration deserves credit for increasing the requirements for uh, the arts, whether it's visual, performing, or, uh, or musical, uh, in uh, stiffening the requirements. I can tell you what I can take credit for. We've increased the funding. Uh, we increased uh, funding in this last legislative session significantly for uh, uh, per student funding for public schools. Now that's not singling out the arts. That's total funding. But to the extent that art receives uh, a portion of that per student funding, then everyone's boat got raised, if you will. Uh, and we, uh, we weren't satisfied just to do what we thought was adequate. We s established a floor of what was adequate to comply with the court order. And then we went above it to what we wanted to term uh, excellence. And, uh, and in fact, we did get out of court. The Supreme Court dismissed the Lakeview case after all these years uh, based upon the additional resources and some other things, obviously, that were done. So w what are we doing with the arts? Well, number one, the previous administration, and we're continuing the, the policy, has increased the requirements for uh, art in the classroom. Uh, secondly, uh, we have increased funding for, on a per-student basis for all the academic requirements in our public schools, which does include art. Okay, thank you. You bet. Well, obviously, the arts are important to you. Are you planning on pursuing this, a career uh, maybe? Or? Yes, definitely. I'm here for instrumental music, and so I want to Instrumental music? music? Mm -hmm. What's your instrument? Um, well, um, a lot of us that are in instrumental music play a lot of different instruments, but my main one is um, clarinet. So. And how many do you play? Just a few, I guess. And I'm a good kazoo player, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> good. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Danny Antockley from Harmony Grove, Camden. And because of another governor of Arkansas, I'm curious on your views of evolution. Evolution? And, and evolution and intelligent design in schools. Well, I've said in the public, in the newspaper, and on TV, and I think on this program, in answer to a previous question, I don't think intelligent design and evolution are mutually exclusive. I believe in God, and I believe in evolution. I believe in both, and I think you can believe in both. I don't think they need to exist. Now, I'm not smart enough to give you all the answers of how it all worked, uh, uh, and I think everyone's free to, to be able to judge that for themselves, but uh, I don't think it's a this or that kind of answer. I, I think you can, uh, I hope you can believe in both, because I do. And for schools? Um, oh, in schools, I think uh, they teach the science and, and leave... Uh, uh, religion to the churches and the families. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, hello, my name is Adam Rowenfeld. I'm from Fayetteville. Uh, my question is a, a cultural question, actually. Um, I've noticed in the past few years there's been a rise in, I guess, cultural recognitions, like in your French class or Spanish class or German class. Sometimes there will be um, cultural events or diversity that are recognized. And I'm just curious if there's ever if there if there's ever a plan to maybe expand and bring in the Eastern cultures, such as uh, China or India or Japan. You know. Uh, Society responds to uh, the cultural groups that are primarily located in, in those communities. And Little Rock has seen some of that recently. We just had a, a garden opening uh, of a Korean garden uh, because of the uh, presence of uh, the Grand Master in Taekwondo who has set up the headquarters in Little Rock. And we have uh, a significant Korean influence now and some of the cultural exchange that goes with that is, is flourishing. But uh, that's primarily not government driven. It's driven by uh, the influences in a given community based upon the demographics of that particular population. So yeah, I, I suspect you'll see more of that but only when there's an influx of people from that culture that actually abides or lives in a certain place. And then those folks who would take a leadership position to go make it happen, you know. Uh, a lot of folks j may live in a community and not want to get involved and not, not want to go to the trouble. And it takes two or three or four or five or sometimes 10 or 12 folks to be leaders uh, to go initiate uh, a cultural exchange activity. We're seeing a lot of it in Little Rock with the Cinco de Mayo is really uh, expanded in Little Rock with the uh, Hispanic influence that's uh, that's grown in, in the Little Rock area, and I think it has in other areas of the states as well. Uh, but I, I, I don't think you'll see the kind of growth in the Eastern cultures, except in areas where there are folks uh, who are from that culture and take the initiative to, uh, to start it. One of the beauties of this country is uh, all of us learn from, that, uh, from those exchanges. They even gave me an honorary black belt, although I couldn't begin to break a board. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Helen Manager and I'm from Springdale. And I know most, if not all, of the students and faculty that I've been in contact with have said that through the No Child Left Behind Act, where the teachers are now teaching mo mainly to the test instead of the course, students aren't getting as much out of the class as they could be. Are, do you have any plans to counteract this new style of teaching? Uh, I wish I had an answer for that one. Uh, no Child Left Behind is a federal mandate, and it's actually up for reauthorization in the Congress as we speak. It's one of those, uh, the way that law was written, if they do nothing, it stays the same. So they've got to get enough votes to make some positive changes. I have heard from teacher after teacher that there are huge holes in No Child Left Behind. Uh, there are some things we can do as a state uh, that can lessen the amount of testing and I have proposed and supported before I was governor uh, a change uh, when I was attorney general. Uh, I'm happy to report that that change is in progress and that it will be going forward now. Uh, and that is we have combined the national uh, norm and the, and the benchmark, the state benchmark test into one augmented test so as to cut in half the number of tests that the state requires and the amount of time necessary to prepare for and teach to that test. Uh, so we've done all I know to do at this juncture to try to lessen the amount of tests and, and uh, lessen the amount of time preparing for the test. The No Child Left Behind issue will have to be done uh, on a federal level. And we are encouraging our congressional delegation to listen to the doggone teachers. And the, and the folks who actually are on the front line trying to administer this stuff and take their input into consideration when they formulate policy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.